it's our time. You know, we're gonna, we know we'll be 25 and still <laughs> doing this. We wanted to start getting out of this local area and then maybe have, have a record out. We had played a place out in Liberal, Kansas, a biker bar, and we knew that there was a recording studio out there. I think all the songs Steve had written, and they were great. I mean, they had a lot of energy, and it was us, and we were having fun, and the guys sang great. It, it was a good little demo. And we thought, well, what are we gonna do with it? And we had, had met a gentleman in New Jersey who had called and said, I, I know that Don Kirshner is starting a label. He's looking for bands. Why don't you send me that demo, and I'll send it over to him. He said he took it by. He said there was tons of tapes all over this lady's desk. And she said, there's about 150 tapes ahead of you. You probably won't be hearing from us, but you never know. He said, thank you, ma'am, put it down, gone. Well, we never heard anything, never heard anything. So we went off to play and continued playing on our school bus, driving around the Midwest, just making our $175 a night, living on a dollar a day. Each of us got one dollar a day. And uh, those who smoked, they had to come about their cigarettes in, in, in different and, and colorful ways. We were playing a bar in Dodge City, Kansas. And during one of our breaks, the bartender walked over and said, uh, there's a call for you from New York City. Would one of you like to talk to this gentleman from New Well, we were going, New York City? Do you know anybody? I don't know anybody. It was Wally Gold calling. Wally Gold, come to find out, was Don Kirshner's right-hand man. And he said, love the tape. Love the violin. You guys are great. I'm coming out to see you in two weeks. Put together a gig. We want to see if you guys are real. As soon as he hung up, yippee! I mean, we just went, if we'd had anything to throw in the air, we would have thrown it in the air. We knew this was going to be it this was going to be it, that this was going to be our one chance. The next day, we were sitting in the bus, and we thought, well, what are we going to do? Where are we going to have this? We, nobody comes to see us. If this guy comes and there's nobody there, he's just going to go, well, obviously, they don't draw any people. So we picked Ellenwood, Kansas, this little town in western Kansas. There's nothing but a grain elevator and a gas station and an opera house. This old opera house was basically the only thing in this, in the quote, downtown area that was downtown. I think it was like $150 to rent the place and that we were gonna give away free beer. And we put posters up on every telephone pole with a 200 mile radius. And we thought that if we advertised enough that we were giving away free beer, that uh, people might come. Forget about who was playing. Under the small print underneath says Kansas, but free beer. And man, when, when it came time for that show, they were lined up for miles down the highway. Then there's people clamoring to get in. The house is packed, everybody's screaming, well, they're all drunk. I remember that night pretty well because I was one of the people that actually counted the money that came in from the door. We had 525 people there that night, or 526. We charged them each a quarter to get in. It was good. It was a smart thing to do. We, I didn't realize it was that smart, but it packed the place out way over the top. Being young and dumb, we did have a moment of brilliance. Wally was very surprised at the, at the crowd reaction, and he I don't think he knew that we had given away all this beer to all these kids. So, and, and the crowd was just out of their mind. Needless to say, we played our hearts out. If you hear a tape of it, it sounded horrible. Some of the worst vocals we've ever uttered in our lives, ever sung in our lives, are on that tape. So we were amazed that Wally even signed us. Wally was impressed, and that's all pretty much that mattered. He specifically walked over to Robbie and uh, said, you know, because of the violin, I, I, I want to sign you guys. Somebody at Columbia, I think his name was Goddard Lieberson, you know, heard the violin and was into classical music and decided that that might be the way to go. So when we heard uh, Kirshner was interested in us, well, all I, all I knew in my head then was 
monkeys. And I thought, God, what in the world is some guy hearing us? After it was over, Wally said, you guys, you're, you're coming to New York. We were ready to, to get out of, of Topeka and go record. That gig, Ellenwood Opera House, was, a, was the start of our career. Again, all part of this miracle that that happened and this happened and this lined up, that's how we got signed.